try and introduce LIDAR in case there's someone here that's not totally familiar with it and uh, sort of compare topo, topographic li uh, LIDAR versus uh, bathymetric or marine LIDAR and uh, outline a few uh, differences, pros, cons, and, and uh, then I'll get into uh, our applications and a couple of samples of our uh, projects uh, this year. So that's the Wikipedia definition of, of uh, LIDAR. Um, so it's it's an airborne system. Uh, uh, laser frequencies. Uh, it has uh, two uh, two lasers on board. One uh, an infrared, which is uh, uh, used to get a, a, a reflection off the surface of the water or land or first return, and a green laser, which uh, penetrates the, uh, the water column. And if you're lucky, get a reflection off the seabed or whatever else is in the water column. And it's this a uh, this time difference between the two uh, arrival times. It's uh, used to calculate the uh, basically the depth or depending on, on what system you're using, basically to get a height off the uh, point on the seabed. Uh, so we got a. Uh, surface return uh, and, and uh, surface return. We also get a surface return off the green laser and a bottom return. The shape of this pulse is what, what's critical and the detection point along this uh, bottom return is it's, uh, one of the more difficult parts of, of, the, uh, of the LiDAR system. Depending on the water column properties, This, the shape of this pulse may be, may be very, uh, very linear or non-linear, maybe no noticeable uh, return here. So it's, it's the algorithms that interact with everything can be, uh, can be difficult. Um, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a laser firing at a, a given uh, pulse rate, and, and there's this uh, mirrors or scanner that, that focuses uh, or directs the uh, direction of, of the laser. The aircraft, uh, for bathymetric LiDAR, most systems seem to be in fixed wing aircraft, uh, primarily because of power requirements for the, uh, the laser system, and the, the payload is usually a little heavier than can be carried in a helicopter, maybe. It's also a more stable platform, generally. Um, everything is, uh, it has an inertial measuring system of uh, differential GPS, of course, and, and uh, these days preferably real-time kinematic or post-processing uh, kinematic GPS to get very accurate uh, uh, height measurements. So the orientation and position of the laser is determined as best as possible. That's the basic basic idea. Uh, the systems that are out there that that we know of or I know of are um, Optech is the primary um, builder of the laser systems. So they have uh, shoal systems. Uh, I'm assuming in house they put out a 1,000 uh, shoals 1,000, which I think is a one one kilohertz uh, pulse repetition rate. 3 kilohertz pulse repetition rate system, a newer system. And more recently, they've, they've taken the uh, topographic LiDAR system and modified it to a bathymetric LiDAR. And uh, it's, I think it's marketing it as Aquarius. And uh, it's geared towards, uh, it's, it's marketed as a, as a compact bathymetric LiDAR system, smaller, more compact, less expensive, I presume. And it's geared for the, uh, uh, the, the the really the land water interface. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good topographic LiDAR, and it has presumably reasonable uh, bathymetric uh, 
probably up to about 10 meters from what I hear. It's more, and it's geared towards the, uh, probably the land survey community for uh, lakes, rivers, inland waters, type of areas. And we haven't uh, tested that, that yet. Private company, Peladron, have a um, have taken over the rights to a, a Swedish uh, bathymetric LiDAR system, Hawkeye 2. So the, and it's a UK company now. It's a retired hydrographers got together and uh, started a uh, bathymetric LiDAR company. So that's a, we call it a Swedish system, or we used to call it a Swedish system. Frugro have seemed to be taken over uh, a lot of the uh, market on the uh, the other commercial systems, LADS, which is an Australian uh, bathymetric LiDAR system. So there's a few Frugro LADS, and there's a Frugro uh, uh, Plagos in San Diego, which runs the uh, Optech show system. I think LADS is also an Optech built, Optech based laser. And uh, US Corps of Engineers in Navoshino and NOAA have had show systems for, for several years. They call their system charts, I think, and I think it's a 3,000 uh, uptake system. So that's operate, been operational for several years. It's but it's you know government operated and used. Uh, but they're they're developing a new system called Sismil. I have a slide later on that kind of schematic that shows what's involved in Sismil, the latest lidar technology, and and uh, but also multispectral scanner. Video, of course, uh, and, and, uh, and there's a new piece of software being developed to process the data, which is quite interesting. I think that's on a 2012. <coughs> it's close to being uh, demoed or sea trial now. I understand in, in the southern U.S. It's being developed at uh, uh, Stennis Space Center, or Lafayette, um, Louisiana, uh, at the home of. Emotional. University of Southern Mississippi are involved also in the software development, and Optech are very involved also. So everyone's kind of interested in it. Waiting for SISMO to come out to get their hands on it. Tom Graham Cloud versus Baffy Lagar. Just to highlight some of the differences. Uh, so, with respect to uh, the actual lasers, Bathmetric has two lasers, two lasers, Topo has one. I know generally. Wavelengths, uh, there's a blue and a green uh, frequencies and uh, covers infrared. Frequency or density or the pulse repetition rate, I guess is, what, is a better way to describe that. Uh, generally, uh, bathymetric systems uh, have slower uh, repetition rates, uh, the vicinity of you know, 3 kilohertz, 3,000 pings per, per second. And uh, and achieving a, a spot density of uh, two to five meters, uh, you can get. Uh, from what I know, it's uh, if you can get two meters if you uh, fly lower and slower and, and uh, do more overlap, of course. But uh, that also means increased uh, cost and time. Uh, topographic, I think, are in the vicinity of ten times the density and frequency. Uh, no, I think there's some systems that are 100 kilohertz, but they're I know, 70 kilohertz for sure. And and the uh, and the resolution or density density I should say I think is in, in the order of 10 centimeters. Yeah, because primarily because of the higher repetition rate, the firing rate. Um, disparate energy. Bathymetric um, are generally a larger payload, like I said. <coughs> Bigger electronics requires more power uh, and, and larger aircraft. I know the system we we, we contracted Frugo to, to fly our system. And, uh, I mean, they're close to needing a generator on board the aircraft to, to, to back up the power. The aircraft tend, don't tend to uh, the engines don't tend to supply much power. Topographic are smaller, compact, and, and uh, a lot of them are in helicopters. So AVs or drones, you know, also. Depth penetration, 
as mentioned, depends, depends on water color, on water properties. They say up to 50 meters, but I think that's really ideal conditions in the South Pacific and flat, flat calm waters. But uh, in, in Canada and in, in the Arctic, uh, we get 20 meters of all 20, sometimes 30. Topography is generally not applicable. You might get some penetration, but generally the power is not there to, to or the frequency is not there to penetrate water. Cost. Um, uh, I mean that's variable, but 1,500 to 2,000 dollars per square kilometer. Uh, our project was in the vicinity of 1,700 per square kilometer. That includes, uh, you know, everything: uh, mobilization, the data acquisition, data processing, topographic. Uh, I think uh, I'm not as familiar, but I think it's uh, much less, probably 200 dollars per square kilometer. Okay. So. Uh, if you want water penetration, <coughs> this is a schematic just to illustrate, um, let's say, coverages between uh, LiDAR and, and acoustic, or in particular multi beam systems. Um, so, let's say on a single flight line of the LiDAR system, again, we're talking shallow water up to you know, 30 meters. And uh, so, with, uh, with acoustic systems, Swath width is a function of water depth, usually three times water depth. So, uh, you know, in 20 meters of water, you're looking at 60 meter, 60 meter swath. Typical lidar systems are about uh, 200 meters plus. Uh, I think it's about uh, half the flying height kind of thing. Flying height is generally about 400 meters of water. Now. This, this is our, our project. They were getting about 260. 260 meter um, swath width, and then they flew flight lines at 200 meters, so it's about 15 percent, 15 percent side lap. Yeah. So if you're looking at uh, three, four times the effort to get the same coverage with, with, with boats, and of course boats go at 10 knots and aircraft go at uh, 200 knots. Um, Again, on the right here is the demonstration of the depth. There's also acoustic uh, fixed transducer, acoustic sweep systems that are generally have a, have a fixed width, depends on the width of your rooms. They're usually in the vicinity of 10 meter, 10 meter type width. There's LiDAR can cover. Generally, on our projects for uh, bathymetric LiDAR, we we're very interested in everything from the high water line seaward generally just above the high water line. So we, in our projects, we ensure that they get uh, above the high water line, maybe a couple of hundred meters inland to ensure we got the, uh, got, got the uh, full water, water land interface. Probably looking at uh, uh, 10 times. Here, here's a, a real example. Uh, we did a demonstration project with uh, Optech uh, 2009 in Burlington in Lake Ontario near Toronto and uh, this this is uh, three and a half hours of LiDAR and this is uh, two days of uh, multi beam with a launch uh, just a patch here. like I said the, the efficiency of acoustic systems uh, rapidly decays as you get close to shore so what I mean logically what what we try and map the near shore with LiDAR or others with LiDAR these days and, and then take go from the LiDAR coverage to deeper 